SDR Play acquired the rights to Studio One back in mid-2016, and the program was renamed SDR Uno. In that time, it has undergone continuous development, both to add new features, to expand the capabilities of the software, and to accommodate new models of RSP as they were introduced. However, it soon became apparent that to fully develop the software where we wanted it to be, a complete rewrite was necessary, and hence SDR Connect was born. The first public uh, preview of, of SDR Connect was released a couple of months back, and more recently, Preview 2 has been released, which adds additional features as part of our ongoing development process. and plumbing because they fix pipes. We're talking about emergency plumbing. One of the primary objectives of the redesign was to take the basic user interface and make it clean and uncluttered in appearance. You can see the RF spectrum, beneath it the waterfall, and in the upper right corner the auxiliary spectrum. In addition, we added an audio spectrum display, something that wasn't available in SDR Uno company, we're proud of our long history of helping families build the kitchens of their dreams. A control at the top of the screen allows you to access the device hardware settings. Here you can set such things as sample rate, RF gain, so on and so forth. Other controls are displayed in a sidebar which can be collapsed to put it out of the way. Here you can select the various demodulation modes, you can set the uh, AGC, squelch levels, and so on. You can select the audio output of the device and various other audio settings. And then finally, near the bottom, you can select the various bands you wish to listen to. Thank you. The holiday starts Another control at the top of the screen allows you to adjust the display settings. Here you can adjust the position and uh, height of the RF spectrum display. You can move the base up and down. You can also uh, adjust the averaging and uh, the gain of the waterfall. If you have an RSP Duo, you'll be pleased to know that diversity tuning is supported. In the lower right of the screen, you see a diversity button. In addition to this, you need to go to the hardware settings for the device and select the toggle for diversity. Once you do this, the circles will appear in the lower right and then you can use your mouse to set the relative phase and amplitude between the two antennas connected. I only have one antenna connected, so I can't fully demonstrate this. Doctor's appointments, grocery shopping. A frequent complaint about SDR Uno was moving all the various windows around the screen. As you can see, they all move together in SDR Connect. But in addition, you can drag any particular window and either dock it to some of the uh, existing windows that are there, or you can just allow it to float on the screen. This will allow you to resize the window. If, for example, we're looking at AUX SP, to get a better look at what's going on. And then if you want to return it, you can drag the window back and dock it back to its original location. Very powerful stuff. Another useful feature is the ability to set up multiple receivers or VRX as we call them. By clicking the plus button at the top of the screen, you can add an additional VRX. Each VRX you add can be tuned independently within the observable spectrum and you have independent volume and mute controls for each. A master mute is also available in the top right corner. So much for the basic functionality. But SDR Connect has two very major features that do not exist with SDR Uno. As you may have noticed, it runs on a Mac. Of course, it also runs on Windows.
Yes, Linux is supported too. And finally, you can run SDR Connect on a Raspberry Pi. You will notice that regardless of platform, the user interface looks exactly the same. The details on exactly what the hardware and software requirements are for each platform, you can find that information on our website. This was an absolutely tremendous accomplishment from our software team. It was a lot of hard work to achieve this. But wait, there's more. You can also run SDR Connect as a server. You start up the server on the machine that your RSP is connected to, and then it's possible to connect remotely, either from the same machine, another machine on your local network, or indeed from another machine across the internet. A control at the top of the screen will allow you to set up various servers. Again, they may be local or they may be across the internet. Once these servers are set up, they can be accessed from the device's drop-down in the upper left. A common scenario is to set up a server on something like a Raspberry Pi. With the server running, it is then possible to connect with a local client. This means that you can access your RSP without actually having it physically right next to you. Alternatively, you might want to set up a remote client and that allows you to access the server all the way across the internet. An on-screen keypad has been added at the bottom of the control screen. You can either click to enter numbers for frequency Alternatively, you can just right click on the frequency display in the main spectrum window and use your keyboard to directly enter the frequency required. There is a new global settings item which will allow you to select your particular IARU region. This has two effects. It may affect which band select buttons are available in the band select window and in addition, for a selected band, it will display the correct width of the band corresponding to the region. In the recording window in the lower right, you now have the option to make full IQ recordings in addition to audio. Click on the record button to start your recording, and when you're done finished recording, click on the stop button. To play back a recording, first stop the stream and then from the drop down you can select IQ file. You can then navigate to the location of the recorded file, which you can specify also in the settings in the recording window. Open the file and then click on play. You now have an option for playback in the lower right, which will show you the position in the recording. You can make the recording repeat or you can open up a different file for playback. You can even play recordings from SDR Uno. The width of the spectrum in the auxiliary spectrum window in the upper right, which I have detached and I'm enlarging here to make it easier to see, is either defined by the preset filter settings in the control window there, Alternatively, you can grab an edge and you can drag it wider or narrower to whatever bandwidth you require. A new control allows for asymmetrical adjustment whereby you can grab either edge and move it in or out, which is extremely useful if you've got some very annoying out-of-band signals. Also in the auxiliary spectrum window, we find another new capability and that is the ability to add notch filters. Clicking on that control allows you to left click anywhere within the spectrum and create a notch. 
Once a notch has been created, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to change the width and depth of the notch, or you can use keyboard up and down arrow keys. You can add as many notches as you like just by adding a left click. Alternatively, you can remove notches by mousing over them and using a right click. A very useful capability. Well, that concludes my quick overview of SDR Connect. I encourage you to try it out. If you're already using SDR Uno, both programs can coexist on your computer. And if you're on one of the other platforms, now's a chance to really explore the good features of the RSP family of uh, receivers. If you do want to try it out, I encourage you to visit our website, sdrplay.com slash sdrconnect and there are a whole bunch of helpful videos which go into the features in much more detail than I had time to do today. So thanks for watching and I hope you'll give it a try. 73